the Citadel LevTac 92. Initial thoughts and setup right now on Pirate Firearms and Reloading. Hi folks, so today I wanted to talk to you about the Citadel LevTac 92. So this is a clone um, of a Winchester 92 um, and it's actually, it comes out of the Rossi factory. Um, so we can be reasonably well assured of the quality. Um, you know, Rossi is not a, a premier firearms manufacturer, um, but they certainly do produce very nice and very functional firearms. Um, so this arrived the other week and um, I have to confess to you guys, I had to send the first one back. Um, I'll insert some little clips here in a moment. Um, couple of photos, a little bit of a video. Basically, I must have got a Friday rifle because this one is exactly the opposite. Um, this one is perfect. So the previous one, I had issues with the threading not being concentric. Um, this rail here was completely loose and I found that the screws and um, where they tapped into the barrel had all been stripped out. Um, also found that the this adjustment screws here were missing for this rear peep sight. Um, so the thing was basically a disaster. There was nothing wrong with the action or anything itself. It was just poorly assembled, basically. Um, this one is the complete opposite. There is absolutely no issues with it. Um, and that's not the local dealer's fault either. That's just something that's come out of the factory. So I'm gonna go quickly over some of the features for you. So obviously I have had a chamber flag in this. This is completely clear. Um, and you can see the green of the follower in the bottom as well. Nothing too spectacular in terms of the action. Um, it is just a standard um, 94, uh, sorry, 92 clone. Um, it does have the big um, loop on it. Um, so out of the box, trigger pull, very, very nice. Um, mine sits at about three and a half pounds. I do have one of the traditional analog um, trigger pull gauges, not a digital one. So three and a half to, to three six maybe. Um, so not bad overall. It does come, uh, like I said, with this rail and the rear sight included. Um, and obviously the front um, bead side as well. Now, something to note as well, because this is a Rossi barrel underneath, it actually does have the dovetail in here. Now, I don't know why you'd take this rail off if you've bought this particular model um, and put a rear sight in there, but I mean, it comes with perfectly good peep sights. This, I would have to suspect, is a Williams sight. Um, I do have a couple of Williams sights on my other firearms and it is identical. The, the winded screw is in the same place and the elevation screw is in the same place and the little eye cup does thread in and out. Um, so just like most of your um, modern Winchester clones, the safety is here up on the top. Okay, nothing spectacular. Obviously red is in the fire position. Um, and then it will release the hammer forward. Um, it does have a half cock safety um, in which pulling the trigger will not do anything. Okay, um, standard small loading gate. Um, and probably the most predominant feature that you will have all noticed by now is the M-Lock fore end. Um, Midwest Industries do make them um, and you can fit them later to, to the Marlins and I believe to the, the Winchester clones as well. Um, but this one comes out of the factory with one. The other thing here, the barrel is threaded. Now, initially it was suspected that this was going to be half by 28. This is not the case. Um, this particular one is threaded 37 64 by 28. Um, so that's the common one for um, 45 and 44, and this is actually a 44 Magnum as well. Um, I suspect that if you purchase the 45 454 Casul version of this, it will be threaded the same. Um, but the 357 38 special version is threaded half by 28. So that's just something to keep an eye out for. It is a little bit of a strange threading. I know it's um, a little bit more common in the States, but here in New Zealand, it's a pretty uncommon threading. Um, beyond that, it's it's quite a nice rifle. Um, I can't wait to get out and shoot it. I haven't put a single round down it yet. I've had dummy rounds through it, checking the action, checking everything out. All of them have an eight round capacity in the tube. Um, 
off their chamber length so you may fit more of the, the smaller alternatives. So we all know that you can fire 38 special in a 357 Magnum and you can fire 44 special in a 44 Magnum and the same with the 454 Casul, you can fire 45 long cold. You just got to remember if you fire a lot and you build a carbon ring and then try and force that larger case into the chamber you may run into issues. Um, but beyond that, yep, so it's eight, eight in the tube, um, which is a nice nice capacity to, to plink and have a little bit of fun. So I'm going to show you very quickly how I'm going to set the rifle up. Um, I'll do a quick time lapse of me actually setting the rifle up. I'll give you a few final thoughts and we'll call it quits for this video. I will come back and do another video which will be the full review after I've had, you know, four or five months to play with it. Um, I'd like to give you a fair review, not just go to the range once and, and shoot a couple of rounds and say, oh yeah, it's awesome and, and leave it at that. Now, uh, full disclosure too, I have paid for this entire rifle, the shipping, everything with my own money. Okay folks, this is how I plan on setting up um, my Citadel LevTac. Um, so I've got my favorite four end grip here, um, obviously M-Lock compatible. I probably will put some rail cover around here to provide a little bit of extra texture and grip up on the fore end. Um, small bit of Picatinny rail at the front to clip on a bipod. Honestly, that's mainly gonna be for zeroing it in. That will probably come off later. Um, this is actually a polymer bit of rail, so it's light enough, I might even leave it there. Now, um, what I have up here, it's a, it's an Aimpoint clone. This one is actually from Vector Optics. Um, so if you haven't heard of Vector Optics, um, they are a Chinese company, and this is their Maverick 1 by 22 mil. Um, so it came with a kill flash, um, which I've since screwed on the front. Um, it does have this rubberized um, over mold. They do do one without that, of course. Um, and it did actually come with a high rise mount as well um, for your standard AR platform. Um, obviously, I've got the low rise mount. This is a traditional rifle. So, interestingly enough, these come with a five year warranty, um, which is which is pretty huge in the firearms game anyway. Um, so, I'm going to give that a good go. 44 Magnum's a good recoiling cartridge to test test that guy out and see if it holds zero. Um, I have bought Vector stuff in the past and been very, very impressed with it, so I'm gonna give that a whirl. The other thing I have here is the Olight Odin Mini. So this is the smaller of the two versions. It's the new one that features the locking ring on the tail cap. A lot of the complaints with early Olight was their magnetic tail caps could be brushed off quite easily. Um, they have now made this little uh, locking device on here for their um, remote mount switch. Picatinny mounted. Out of the box it actually comes with a quick detachable M-lock mount. So you just depress that and you can slide the torch out. So you can actually use this as a handheld torch. I've bought additional mounts. I've got one set up on my Ruger 1022. Um, the next couple of weeks I'm about to go on a big rabbit shoot. Um, so I've got that all set up ready to go um, for that. The other cool thing, once you've got it mounted in there too, you can turn this little dial and lock it. Um, and that will, that will doubly secure it because the only thing retaining the torch in the mount is this spring-loaded device here. Now I suspect that'll be fine by itself, um, but just an added layer of security. So that's really cool. So probably gonna mount that somewhere up the front. I will do a full video on this um, Odin Mini at some point as well. Um, once I take it down rabbiting and um, and give it a good test out and, and it's subject to a bit of recall here on the 44 Magnum, I will, um, I'll show you that one too. So beyond that, nothing spectacular. Um, generic built uh, muzzle brake. Um, I'm gonna have to bore that out just a touch to, to accommodate 44 Magnum, but beyond that, that'll be absolutely fine. Um, so I'm gonna put it all together and um, I'll come back.
Okay, folks, with a fair amount of struggling, frustration, and uh, moving things around, finally settled on, on a setup that'll do for now. Um, so the O-Light in its quick bracket, um, I'm gonna turn that to lock. Uh, interestingly, the it's a 45 degree bracket for the M-Lock, and the 45 is not quite the same as the 45 on this handguard. Uh, it's not a true 45 handguard. Um, that's something to note. It's um, it's taller than it is wider, and so these angles here, this this normally what you'd call a 45, is actually not. So a little bit of playing around. Of course, the screws weren't initially long enough, so ended up taking the handguard off. To be honest, that is the easy way to install the M-Lock. You shouldn't have to, but um, it certainly makes life easier, and that's what I landed on. Also landed on putting the remote on this side. Um, I'll just grab a couple of little, I've got some cable clippers there, and um, what I'll do is I'll chuck them on top of that pick rail, so that'll just hold the cable um, and hold it away from the barrel too, just in case it gets a bit warm. Um, obviously, Vector um, Maverick up on top, ready to go, so I'm just gonna go and bore sight that now. Um, and beyond that, we're good to go. Now, interestingly enough too, I failed to mention earlier, these, these iron sights that come from factory, I suspect they may bore sight them, so I put my bore sighter on this and they were pretty much spot on. Um, the laser dot uh, was just slightly above the front post um, when sighting it, which is about where I normally put them anyway when I bore sight something, so happy with that. Um, the tail cap and, and, and remote switch on this, on this Odin Mini here, I have to confess is not my favorite design. Um, a lot of them have that um, pigtail bungee style setup. I um, have to be honest, I would have much preferred that. Now having a look at Olight's website too, it looks like they do actually make one. Um, I'm not sure if it's this new style with the, um, with the locking ring on it though, so I'll have to look at that. Um, but that may be an option in the future. Now, I didn't end up fitting the muzzle brake. Um, I now have realized also that, you know, the thread is gonna be wrong as well. So um, I'm gonna take that out um, and go around to a, a mate's place, borrow his lathe and sort that one out and then mount that up on the end. But for now, this is ready to go to the range. So hopefully I'll get out in the next couple of days, um, put some rounds through it and see how it goes. So thanks for watching and um, hope you enjoyed it. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I release new videos every Friday, so hit that notifications bell so you don't miss out on anything. See you in the next one.